While it may be gone forever, the Laurentide Ice Sheet will continue to affect the region geographically for thousands of years into the future. At its height, the colossal weight of mile-high ice put enormous downward pressure on Earth's crust. Like a giant trampoline, the land has been rebounding ever since, but unevenly. Southern upstate New York, where the ice retreated completely long before it melted farther to the north, has finished rebounding. But the city of Kingston, on Lake Ontario's northeastern shore, is still rising at more than one centimeter each year. The region around Lake Champlain has rebounded more than 500 feet since the ice retreated. In fact, the entire eastern rim of Lake Ontario is rising, a phenomenon called upwarping, while land to the southwest within the Great Lakes Basin is actually falling. Over the past several thousand years, this has resulted in Lake Ontario tipping slightly to the south. Harbors and bays, like this one at Oswego, New York, have become relatively deep basins. Once a shallow river delta, Oswego Harbor is now deep enough to accommodate large-hulled, ocean-going cargo ships without the need for constant dredging. As the Canadian mainland continues to rise up, the St. Lawrence River, outflow to the sea for all the Great Lakes, rises with it. The St. Lawrence is relatively shallow where Lake Ontario flows into it. Even the smallest watercraft must be careful to avoid rocky shoals that lie just a foot or two below this wide point in the river off Cape Vincent. River pilots guide ocean-going ships through a narrow passage of the St. Lawrence Seaway here to avoid grounding them. That channel is relatively deep at 80 feet or so, but as the upwarping continues, could the day come when the Great Lakes begin to drain southward instead of northward through the St. Lawrence River Basin as it does today? Scientists say yes. Across upstate New York, the sea has flooded in and receded repeatedly over millions of years. Sediments from these floods comprise the region's rocky foundation end to end, from the layers of fossil-filled sandstone at Quarry Farm to the limestone formations that underlie the seemingly indestructible cap rock at Niagara Falls. Far into the future, the sea will return, and by then the ice will have come and gone yet again. These events are predictable and inevitable, the result of oscillations in the Earth's attitude toward the sun, as recorded in the geological record over billions of years. Scientists say the Earth began cooling again about 4,000 years ago, right on schedule toward the next ice age. Modern-day global warming won't stop the ice. Its effects may devastate human and other life forms, but the geological effects will be relatively short-term a brief blip on Earth's ultimate timeline. When the ice returns and melts away once more, a new set of Ice Age footprints will mark the northern landscape, and most everything we have just seen will be wiped away forever. Only the sea will look the same.